welcome to my review of the Wild Steer Tech Neck and the optionally available survival kit. Wild Steer is a French company that was founded in 2004. If you are into outdoor archery, you have probably heard of this company. Archery is a very popular sport in France and Wild Steer's first product was a knife that came with a special tool for extracting arrows from wood. Today Wild Steer offers a wide range of sporting knives, tactical knives, practical outdoor hunting and survival knives, one of them being the Tech Neck. The Wild Steer Tech Neck comes in different configurations. First of all you can choose between a plain edge and a partially serrated edge. All models come with a paracord handle. It's available in several colors, one of them even with a glow-in-the-dark effect. That's the knife. Then there are two different nylon sheath models, with one being made for horizontal belt carry and another one that is Molly compatible. This is, by the way, the Molly sheath. And finally, Wild Steer offers several survival items that you can combine with the knife and the sheath. You can either buy the knife with the fully featured survival kit or you can buy each item separately. This is the complete kit. All components are high quality products. Of course, some are better than others, but we will get to the details in a few moments when we take a look at every single item of the kit. Let's start with the knife. Right off the bat, this fixed blade is a fantastic knife. It comes with a rather narrow blade, which means it is fairly lightweight and doesn't take up much space. The weight comes in at 88 grams. The blade steel is Sandwick 12C27, the well-known stainless steel from Sweden. In my opinion, an excellent choice of steel for a survival knife because it doesn't take much effort to sharpen it and it holds an edge pretty well. The overall length is 20 cm, the blade length is 10 cm. The blade thickness is 3.8 mm. For a quick size comparison, let's see the Tech Neck side by side with some popular fixed blades that many of you are probably familiar with. This is the K-Bar BK11. Here I've got the Isula 1. And this is the SE3. And as you can see, the SE3 and the Tech Neck are pretty much the same length. The blade shape is a draw point design. The blade is hollow ground and comes with a swedge. This blade geometry allows for some serious cutting and woodworking tasks. The handle is wrapped with paracord and provides a full four finger grip. The paracord may come in very handy in a survival situation. I guess there is at least one meter of paracord. Of course, if you need the paracord for something else, the knife handle becomes less comfortable. The only con of a slim design like this is that there is no finger guard, so you need to be a little more careful when using this knife. Now let's take a look at the sheath. It's definitely not the prettiest sheath. Also the build quality could be better. There are some sharp corners where they cinched the nylon. But if your goal is to design a lightweight and compact sheath, I'm afraid you inevitably end up with a sheath like this instead of something like this. Yes, the build quality is better. But this sheath is very bulky, although the knife, the SE3, is not that much bigger. For what it is, this sheath serves its purpose very well. The knife is securely held in place. Actually, it's a very tight fit. You can carry the knife upside down as a neck knife without any problems. 
or you can attach it upside down to the shoulder strap of a backpack. Which brings us to the attachment options. The sheath comes with a belt loop for vertical carry. In this case you can use the paracord as a leg strap. Or you use this nylon strap for attaching the sheath to any Molly compatible gear. So much for the knife and the molly sheath, a combination that you can buy as it is without all the other items. The Technec definitely makes for a great practical and lightweight outdoor or backup knife, no matter what your preferred carry method is. Now let's move on to the survival kit. First of all, let me tell you that I'm not a survival expert at all. I'm not trained in any way. I can only give you my very personal view on these items based on common sense and experience. I'm starting with the fire steel. Actually, there is not much to say about this fire steel. It simply works. It's a Swedish fire steel that originally was developed by the Swedish Defense Department. It's a fairly compact design. It comes with a wooden handle and a bungee cord. It works reliably in combination with the blade and creates enough sparks to get a fire started. Now for this item. This is not meant to be disassembled, which wouldn't be possible without breaking it anyway. Actually there are three items, a diamond sharpener, a micro compass and a signal mirror. I'm probably not the right person for testing the sharpening area, because I'm not very good at freehand sharpening in general. The only thing I can say is that I found this area very small compared to the length of the cutting edge. But that's probably just me. Someone who is used to sharpen his knives on small sharpening stones might get some decent results. The only visible results I was able to achieve are these scratches on the blade. Maybe with some practice I could improve my skills, but I didn't want to ruin the blade completely. By the way, in the meantime, I have sharpened this knife twice on the Spyderco Sharpmaker with very good results, but that doesn't come as a surprise because of the excellent 12C27 blade steel, which is really easy to sharpen. Now for the signal mirror. I was very skeptical, mainly because of its size, but with a little bit of practice, it's fairly easy to aim it at a target, in my case at my video camera. As for the micro compass, it is fairly accurate. Well, it is as accurate as a small compass like this can be. I compared it to this a little more professional compass and I have to say the small one is definitely usable. But of course, this is just a backup or emergency compass. This shouldn't be your only navigation device if you are out in the wilderness. One important thing you should be aware of is that you keep the compass away from any metal items, namely the knife and the flashlight. Look at this. So don't use the compass while it is attached to the sheath with the flashlight next to it and the knife right behind it. This piece of metal here is aluminum which is only paramagnetic 
and shouldn't affect the compass at all. The last item of the survival kit is this flashlight, the Streamlight MicroStream. Actually, it's a very popular flashlight. There are lots of positive reviews on flashlight forums as well as here on YouTube. So I won't get too deep into details here. Let me give you just some basic facts. It comes with a C4 LED. The brightness is 28 lumens. It is powered by a AAA battery with a maximum runtime of 2.25 hours. There is some texturing on the body of the flashlight which allows you to get a good grip on it. There is a pocket clip that can be used in either direction. Streamlight even calls it an unbreakable pocket clip. The microstream comes with a rubberized clicky cap. There is only one mode, the flashlight is either on or off. For momentary on, you can also hold the clicky without actually clicking it all the way down. So, all in all, it's a great EDC flashlight, especially if you consider the fairly low price tag. But since the MicroStream is part of a survival kit here, you may ask, is it also a great survival flashlight? Well, of course, it depends on the survival situation you are in. But what I wanted to know was if the MicroStream is waterproof or at least water resistant. My mistake was that I didn't read the specs of the Streamlight MicroStream before testing it. I simply assumed that it is water resistant per IPX8 like my small 47s Prion. Now IPX8 means that an item is suitable for continuous immersion in water at a depth beyond 1 meter. So I put the flashlight under water for a few minutes, which turned out to be a bad idea. Look what happened. By the way, the O-ring sealed battery compartment stayed completely dry and fortunately within a day the water evaporated from the head of the flashlight and didn't harm the LED. When I looked up the specs on the Streamlight website, I found out that my test was actually an abuse of this product because it is only water resistant per IPX4, which means it is only protected against splashing water. So you're not supposed to use this torch underwater. With that being said, it is still an excellent flashlight for the money, but it is not as rugged and robust against the elements as you might expect from a survival flashlight. So keep that in mind. What are my final thoughts on this whole package? Well, first of all, you get some good quality products here. The Wild Steer Tech Neck is an excellent fixed blade, the Streamlight MicroStream is a good value for money flashlight. The Swedish Fire Steel is worth the money. And if you manage to master this sharpening area, this item is probably worth the money as well. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm not a trained survivalist. But generally speaking, the usefulness of a survival kit depends on the specific emergency situation that you might get into. So it's always a good idea to put together a survival kit that suits your specific needs. A knife, a flashlight, a fire steel, a compass and a signal mirror are just basic components. And if you don't own any of them so far, this kit is definitely a good starting point. However, if you know, for example, that you might get into very wet weather conditions, you should probably consider an IPX8 instead of an IPX4 water resistant flashlight. I consider this knife and the survival kit as a backup. On a long hiking trip in the middle of nowhere, you probably carry a bigger knife, a more rugged flashlight and a better compass in your backpack anyway. But a kit like this would be very useful on your belt for example. In case you lose your backpack, you still have these items on your person. Just let me know what you think and comment below. Make sure you visit the Wild Steer website, they offer many more interesting knives. Thanks for watching and take care.